Hi everybody. Uh, it's a little bit different locale than we usually have for our computer class, but um, all things considered, not too bad. I get to be outside. I don't have to wear shoes, so I'm making the best of it. Today we're going to be talking about something we've talked about before. We're going to be talking about ebooks. Now I understand a lot of people aren't necessarily fans of ebooks. I just finished this one two days ago. It was pretty good. I'm a Pendergast fan and this one's actually set in Sanibel so pretty nice to have a kind of a local interest story but here's the problem. I finished it and now the library's closed. I can't return it and I can't go check out some more. So I'm going to turn to ebooks and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Okay so Finally, what if you wanted to read your book on a mobile device, like a phone or a tablet or something like that? A little bit different process, but still pretty easy. Um, first of all, you're going to do everything right through the device itself. So what we're looking at here, this is my phone. That is one of our dogs. Don't let that cute face fool you. That's about two and a half pounds of Satan incarnate right there. But from our phone, uh, I'm using an Android phone, so what I'm going to look for is this app right here. This is the Google Play Store. Now, if you're using an iPhone, slightly different. Instead of the Google Play Store, you're going to look for the Apple App Store. Same thing, just kind of a different name, different symbol. I'm going to go right here to the Google Play Store. And open that up adjust this a little bit and right up here at the top I'm going to search for an app called Libby L I B B Y now you might say well wait a minute everything you've done so far has been through overdrive that's true but if you look right here it says Libby comma by overdrive Libby is kind of the new face of overdrive Overdrive has an Overdrive app, and it works perfectly fine. But Libby is their new version of the Overdrive app. And going forward, our understanding is Libby is the app that Overdrive is going to put their effort into. So it's the one that's going to continue to update and change. Uh, I think there's a few things about Libby um, that I like better than the Overdrive app. So if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend go with the Libby app instead of OverDrive. You can see I don't have it installed on my phone. So I'm going to go right here to where it says install. And it's going to take a couple of seconds. It's going to connect to the Wi-Fi and you can see right here it's starting to download. Usually it doesn't take too long depending on your connection. And there we are, we're almost done, we're at 99%. It's always that last 1% that seems to take forever. <laughs> of course, it's not going to let me down. Come on, Libby, you can do it. You're almost there. 99%. What we're waiting for now is just this button here, hopefully, and a little bit will light up and we can choose open. My guess is right now a lot of people are probably downloading, installing, using Libby. So things might be running a little bit slowly. There it is. So I'm going to click on open. There's a little bit of setup that you have to go through here. It's not a big deal. Uh, I feel like Libby does a really good job of kind of walking through step by step. Uh, welcome, thousands of public libraries offer ebooks and audiobooks for free. First question Do you have a library card? I'm going to say yes. Okay, if you have Libby on another device, you should copy. I don't, or I'll search for a library, or I can guess your library. Totally up to you. Um, let's see, I'll give Libby a shot, and we're going to say yes, guess my library. So it's going to look around here. It's based on my location. It says, hey, the Hillsborough County Public Library Cooperative, Bloomingdale Regional Library, 
I'm going to say yes. This is my library. Let's add a library card. Enter library account details. I'm going to click on that. This is where we're going to put in our card number. All together, no spaces, just like we did previously. Next. Pin, same pin that we used before, the last four digits of whatever phone number you provided us. So please wait. It says, hey, yep, we found your card. So I'm going to choose next. You could rename your card. Why would you want to do that? Um, let's say if multiple people in your family have cards. This is mom's card. This is dad's card. This is Noah's card, Daisy's card, Gabe's card, so on and so forth. I'm just going to leave that alone and say next. This is the part that sometimes gets a little bit confusing, perhaps, for people. Right up top here is where you would search for a book. So whatever it is you're looking for, um, I'm going to plug in Harry Potter. Use that search again that we used previously. And you can see it's predictive. Uh, as soon as I start typing it in, I'm going to choose Harry Potter. And I'm going to start looking through... There's the Sorcerer's Stone, but again, notice this is an audio. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, you might remember from the Overdrive app how it had a little pair of headphones. Libby, keep in mind Libby is a newer app, so they've kind of updated what the headphones look like. They look kind of like Apple AirPods, maybe. Uh, I'm going to keep scrolling down because I am looking for... Harry Potter, Sorcerer Stone, and you can see it says on your loan shelf. Why does it say that? Because I checked that out previously in Overdrive. Keep in mind, Overdrive is Libby. So anything you checked out in Overdrive should carry right on over to Libby, which is kind of a nice feature. So since we've been focusing on the eBooks, let me scroll up here. Let me show you what an audiobook will look like. So let's say I also want to get the audiobook of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'm going to go right here to where it says borrow. Same thing. I want to check it out for 21 days. I'm going to choose borrow. It's going to kind of tick through here. Now, one of the things that I like about Libby that's a little bit different from the previous OverDrive app, you'll notice this little guy right here. Automatically, Libby is going to download whatever you check out, uh, which is really nice. Might not seem like a really big deal. What's the advantage of that? The advantage is once you have it downloaded, you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi in order to read your book or to listen to your book which is nice, uh, especially for mobile devices, because the whole point is you probably want to be taking this with you, especially something like an audiobook. I want to download this audiobook on my phone so that I can go for a walk, go for a bike ride, and listen to my book on my walk, on my bike ride. If it wasn't downloaded, you might remember earlier when we were talking about working on the laptop or the desktop, and I said you can just read it in the browser. The reason you can read it in the browser is because you're connected to Wi-Fi. So it can stream. You've probably heard that word stream before. That's what it's talking about. With an audio book, I want it to be mobile. So I download it to my device so I don't have to be connected to that Wi-Fi or that data connection in order to read my book or listen to my book. So that's one of the things that I like about Libby is when you check materials out, it's automatically going to start downloading that material. So as it's working there, if I wanted to, I could keep browsing, keep looking for other things to read. Where does your book go? How do you find it later? In fact, uh, let's back all the way out. So now I'm back on my phone. 
I'm doing, you know, whatever. And I say, hey, what about that uh, Harry Potter book? I wanted to read that. I wanted to listen to that book. I'm going to find Libby on my phone. This is what the app looks like. Um, if you look at it closely, it's kind of like someone reading a book. So the book's kind of up uh, in front of them. I'm going to tap there on Libby. Right down here in the bottom, the bottom left and bottom right, you'll see uh, shelf. If I click on shelf, that's where all my stuff is hiding. Sometimes people, um, when they open up Libby, they're not exactly sure where everything has gone. Sometimes I've, people have said, hey, you know, I opened Libby up and I can't find my stuff. Where did it go? Could be hiding down here on the shelf. If you click on shelf, this is where all of your stuff is. So you can see there is the audiobook for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. There's the Charles Dickens uh, Three Ghost Stories we checked out earlier. There's the audiobook. There's the ebook. I can start reading it. I can decide how I want to read it. Um, I can read it right here in the Libby app. And I can start reading the book right here on my phone if I wanted to. Um, be totally honest with you. Reading on a phone might not be the best experience. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of real estate. Uh, but one of the advantages of reading on your phone is uh, you can resize things. If you need to, for whatever reason, let's say things like the print is too small. Well, you can actually, if you tap towards the bottom, you can get in here and you get a lot of controls. Um, you can skip around to chapters if you need to. You can bookmark if you can search for stuff. Um, a lot of ways you can get in here and start to get some control over this book and it really makes it uh, easier to read if you need to you can resize it let me go back and kind of do that again because I know that that was kind of fast if you're here reading the book and it's hard to see because you're not seeing my phone but I'm tapping towards the bottom the bottom of the text this will open up this pane where you can kind of get some controls you can search for a specific part of the book. You can bookmark. This little ladder icon here is where you get some more controls. If you want to skip to different chapters, uh, this is where you can get in there for the reading settings. Um, you can increase or decrease the font or the size of the reading. Uh, you can even get in here and play with some of the brightness levels, some of the shading uh, makes it a little bit easier. The dark setting is, is nice. Uh, for some people, they really prefer that dark setting. They find it easier to read. And it's nice that you have uh, some options there to get in there and play with that stuff. And all I'm doing is just kind of clicking around, getting things back to where we were. Let me go back here to the shelf. It's still downloading. It's a big book, so it takes a little while for it to download the audiobook but it's still kind of ticking along there and checking out that audiobook for me. So that's Libby. Um, again, pretty straightforward, different from the laptop desktop experience. You do everything through the device, whether it's a uh, iPad, an iPhone. If that's the case, if it's an Apple product, you're gonna look for that Apple app store uh, and look for the Libby app. Uh, if you're on an Android device, like I am here, you're going to look for that Google Play. And again, it's going to be this sort of icon. You're going to search for the Libby app, install it, and you do everything through the app. Search for your book, check it out, download it, listen to it on the app, read it on the app. They return themselves, so you don't have to worry about returning. If for some reason you finish it early and you want to return it, great. That's never a problem either. You can always return stuff. If you decide for whatever reason um, that you're done, you read all those uh, three ghost stories from Charles Dickens and you're ready to return it, you can go right here to manage loan and you see you have the option to return early. I'm gonna choose return early, I've read it, says you're returning they just want to double check and make sure i said yep i'm done with it return it and that frees it up for someone else 
if they wanted to read it. So that's Libby, and I hope that helps, especially now that uh, the library might not be available at the moment, but the library is still available digitally. So I want to make sure you're able to take advantage of some of our resources like OverDrive and Libby and keep reading. I hope everyone has enjoyed this and learned something from it. And you guys take care and keep an eye out for more classes like this. Bye-bye.